So how exactly do we perform an ablation for atrial fibrillation through a keyhole approach? Now, if you look at the human skeleton here, we can see that the heart sits in the thorax or the chest wall and the excess point through which we put catheters into the heart is from the groin here. And through femoral veins here, we can insert little tubes that make its way all the way through the femoral vein into the inferior vena cava into the heart here. When we look at a magnified view, we can see that the catheters can be taken directly into the heart and positioned in the appropriate place in order to start treatment. For ease of understanding, what we're going to do now is show you the position of the heart within the chest wall. And now we're going to remove the skeleton. So we're focused on the heart. And even more than that, remove the structures that are not relevant to uh, this heart. Now, here we just look at the venous anatomy. And when we look inside the heart, which we can do by removing some of these walls of the heart, which are the right and left ventricular walls that I've just taken out, we can see that the chamber of interest with respect to atrial fibrillation is this particular chamber, which is called the uh, left atrium. And this left atrium is right behind this valve here into the other side of the heart. And I'll show that to you in a short while. Now, if we now spin this heart around, so this was the front view, turning it around slowly and carefully, we can get to this chamber, which is called the right atrium, this being the right ventricle. And what we can then do is if we move some more and rotate it, the heart, so that you look at the back wall of the heart. Now, this wall of the heart is called the left atrium and this left atrium is the chamber of interest with respect to atrial fibrillation <clears throat> and you can see here that the left atrium has in it four pulmonary veins which are these structures here the right upper the right lower <clears throat> the left upper and the left lower pulmonary veins and it's thought that in atrial flutter the pulmonary veins contain ectopic sources of heartbeat which can fire very very rapidly extra heartbeats and the firing of these heartbeats is what leads to then having atrial uh, fibrillation because these heartbeats then conduct out into the atrial chamber very rapidly and creates <coughs> this irregular chaotic activity that characterizes atrial fibrillation. Now, when we think about a keyhole approach to treat atrial fibrillation, what we're looking at is passing a catheter through this area, which is called the right atrium, into the left atrium. And the way we do this is we would take a catheter into the heart, make a small hole here in what's called the fossa ovalis. You can see this nice small structure here and penetrate this heart wall and get across to the other side. And in doing so, we can access this very chamber of interest, which is the left atrium. And this left atrium is this chamber here, which we can then access through that small puncture, which comes out around there into the left atrium. And thereafter, what we do is we try and isolate this pulmonary veins. And the way we do that is we deliver a series of ablation lesions or ablation therapy. And essentially, there is the ability for us to draw and uh, with a catheter approach to deliver heat. And this heat really does denature or destroy bits of tissue around, as you can see here, the pulmonary veins. And therefore, none of these firing extra heartbeats you can see here in blue is capable of getting through or penetrating this line of insulation so we do this on this side and we also perform a line of ablation on the other side and in doing so we isolate the pulmonary veins and so the basic atrial fibrillation ablation procedure is to do with pulmonary vein isolation and this electrical isolation of the pulmonary veins do not allow any extra firing 
uh, ectopic sources from the primary veins to get out into the atrium. And so atrial fibrillation is no longer triggered. Now, if we look at uh, how we would perform this, you can see the primary veins are structures that are circular. And so we use an encircling lesion and effectively would go around the whole of the primary vein, both on the back wall or the posterior wall, but also the front wall of the heart. So you can see here, I'm going to draw in uh, another series of lesions that will encompass the front wall of this veins. And this is now going to be behind this veins. And this is called a wide area circumferential ablation of the primary veins. A wide area circumferential ablation of the primary veins. And this is clearly done on both sides of the uh, heart where you get the left and also the right side uh, wide area circumferential ablation. And when we complete this, uh, the primary veins are typically isolated at this stage and the atrial fibrillation ablation procedure is over. And so this is how we would perform an atrial fibrillation ablation to isolate the primary veins. Mm -hmm.